Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where it's time for my weekend reading report. It's my weekend reading report. Isn't that exciting, Roger? Roger's excited as usual. So yeah, my weekend reading report where I talk about all the stuff I read during the past week, all the stuff I'm going to read, anything that might have shown up here at the manor, you know, as if by magic, and some other stuff that might be happening around this place. So, and there are some things happening, and I did get some stuff, and I did read a couple things. So let's talk about it. The first thing I finished, I finished one book this week. And it was, a, it was a really good book. And that's this one. This is The Bloody Crown of Conan by Robert E. Howard. The second volume in the three-volume set from Del Rey that collects all of Robert E. Howard's Conan stories. It was fantastic. Of course it was. We are in the middle. Well, actually past the middle now. Of Sumerian September. Where I am. And I have been joined by a few people in doing this. I'm reading all of the original Conan stories written by Robert E. Howard. It's been a few years since I've read these. Robert E. Howard is my favorite writer. This is his best series, Conan, so it's been great. It's been great. I've had a wonderful time. This volume actually has my favorite Conan story, which is the only full-length novel that Robert E. Howard wrote about Conan, The Hour of the Dragon. It's magnificent. I liked it even more this time than the last time I read it. I hesitate to say that it's the best Conan story, because I don't think it is, really. There's one story that's better than, better than The Hour of the Dragon, for sure. And I'll talk about that at a future date. But yeah, this is great. I'll talk more about this in its own video. Bloody Crown of Conan. That was fantastic. So, what am I reading that right now, at this very moment? Of course it's this. The Conquering Sword of Conan by Robert E. Howard. So I'm reading this at this very moment. And I probably should be finished with this within the next couple days. And I'm enjoying it tremendously, as I knew I would. This volume actually has what I believe is the greatest Conan story ever written. And I will talk to you about that in the future when I talk about this book, which shouldn't be too far in the future. Shouldn't be too far in the future before I talk about that book. So that, those are the books that I read this month or actually this week. Those are the books that I've been reading this week. But of course, I read comics as well. And there is my ongoing project of reading Batman and Superman every day of my life, the world's finest project. And I have continued to read The Golden Age Superman Omnibus Volume 2. It's glorious. I love it. This is fantastic. The Golden Age Superman in the last story I read actually did kill some guys. It's been a while since Golden Age Superman has cut loose and killed folks, as, Super as Superman used to do in the Golden Age. <laughs> Let's see if I could find that part, because it was actually pretty funny. Yeah, so some crooks have kidnapped Clark Kent, and Clark Kent can't, you know pretend to be anything else other than a cowardly reporter. Otherwise, he'll give away his secret identity, although it turns out it doesn't really matter. So these evil crooks, they tie him up to a tree, and they're going to hit him with their car. They're driving their car at him as he's hanging over the street from a tree. So Clark Kent just kicks the car. He just kicks it. And then you see him standing among the wreckage, it's like, you know what, screw these guys. They had it coming. So, like I said, been a while since Superman cut loose and killed somebody. But, you know, he killed a car full of crooks. And they deserved it. Actually, it was just a couple guys. He just killed a couple guys. It was just a couple of them. It was no big deal. That was the Golden Age Superman. He didn't mess with that guy. Mm-mm. So, yeah, Golden Age Superman coming along splendidly. I finished, I finished this volume, which I've been reading here off and on, and this is World's Finest Silver Age, Volume 2. Great stories. Most of these were illustrated, in fact, almost all of them were illustrated by Dick Sprang, and he just does such a wonderful job, Dick Sprang. He's one of my favorite Batman artists, for sure, and he does a pretty good job with Superman, too, so he 
he does most of the stories in this volume, Dick Sprang does. It's, it's great stuff. It's great stuff. The last story, the stories progressively get weirder and weirder. Uh, so you get covers like this, you know, cre the creature from beyond. This one has the creature from beyond. And this one has artwork by Kurt Swan, the fantastic Superman artist, Kurt Swan, who does a wonderful job. He only does this one issue, I believe, in this volume, but Kurt Swan's awesome. One of the best Superman artists of all time. So that was cool. And I also started this volume. This is Batman illustrated by Neil Adams. And this is volume two. This is volume two. There was a Batman by Neil Adams omnibus, which is very, very difficult to find. Unfortunately, I didn't get it when it came out. And this is what happens. When you don't get an omnibus, when it comes out, you don't get it. Unless you want to pay hundreds of dollars or they reprint it. So, I have this though, volume two of a three volume set. And volume one's hard to get and volume three's hard to get. But this one was easy to get for some strange reason. And it's excellent. Uh, Neil Adams is a great Batman artist. Of course, of course he is. He's legendary for doing the Batman. And yeah, it's awesome. So, I'm going to finish that up. So that's, that's the stuff I read for Batman and Superman. Now, normally, at this point, I would talk about my Sunday comics, because every Sunday I'll, do, I'll read a stack of comic books and talk about them. But this weekend, or this Sunday, I didn't. I didn't. And the reason why is because instead of a stack of comics, I read this. <laughs> I pulled this off the shelf and read Creepy Volume 1, which collects... This is Creepy Archives, right? It's the Creepy... Ar yeah, Creepy Archives Volume 1, which reprints Creepy Issues 1 through 5. And it's actually been a while since I've read these. And I thought, when I picked this up, oh, I've read all these issues before. But I didn't, because when I was reading Creepy, I was picking up back issues, like whatever back issues I could find. And most of those, as it turns out, were from the late 70s. So these early issues were from the 60s. And it turns out I didn't read those. So I picked this up and read it for a reason, which I'll get to in a bit. Great. This is a great cover by Frank Frazetta. Frank Frazetta did most of the covers in this. Uh, the first cover was Jack Davis, right? So the first cover of Creepy was kind of this silly cover by Jack Davis of, um, well, he did a lot for Mad Magazine. He did a lot of different things Jack Davis did, but he's best known for his work in the EC Comics. And when this first came out, it was like a black and white version of EC Comics. But it quickly became its own thing. And as soon as Archie Goodwin started writing more stories and took over... Uh, the editing, it became really, really good. The artwork was good from the start, but uh, the story started getting a lot better. And it's it's excellent. I, I loved it. I, I just, I, I didn't intend to read like the whole thing at once, but I did. I just sat down and I read the whole thing. And so I didn't have time to read the normal Sunday comics that I read. But this was just so good. It's just so good. I couldn't stop reading it. And yeah, so this was awesome. This is what I read for the Sunday comics this week was, and of course it has all the old advertisements. It's, it's great. This is a wonderful edition. It's now in paperback, so you can get it pretty cheap. And it originally came out in the late sixties. So yeah, I hadn't read these. I just thought I did. So I read this, I read this, and then I started reading Tomb of Dracula, because I was thinking of this ever since I did uh, my video last Wednesday for Epic Comic Book Wednesday. And I mentioned that, you know, Tomb of Dracula, they really should have epic collections for those. Which made me think of Tomb of Dracula and how good it was. So I started reading it and I, you know, read the first three issues of Tomb of Dracula. And I'm gonna finish reading this omnibus when, when I have a chance. This was a great series. One of the best 
Marvel comic book series from the 1970s, if not the best. And certainly the best horror comic book that Marvel ever did. It was great. Tomb of Dracula, so I wanted to revisit it. And I just have this one omnibus. They never reprinted the second omnibus, so I was never able to get that because I didn't get it when it came out. And if you don't get omnibuses when they come out, you don't get them unless you want to pay hundreds of dollars. And I don't. So I'll probably continue this in uh, a Marvel Masterworks editions because they are printing those. And I think Marvel Masterworks Volume 4 will pretty much be continuing on from this. Uh, pretty close, so... That's probably how I'll finish up this series. So, yeah, I read that. I did get a few things that arrived at the manor. Speaking of epic collections, I got my first modern epic collection. This is the New Avengers Volume 1, Assembled. The New Avengers. And so modern epic collections are 21st century epic collections, or... or epic collections that reprint material originally published in the 21st century. This is from 2004 through 2005. This is volume one of New Avengers. So it, it feels odd to call it modern because it is, you know, from back in the early 2000s to the mid 2000s, but you know, 2004, that wasn't yesterday. But, you know, I guess anything 21st century is modern. And it seems to be an excellent collection. I didn't actually read most of this when it came out, so a lot of this will be new to me. So, yeah, I got this, and it's pretty cool. And it's close enough, the spine looks close enough to the regular epic collections, which I have hundreds of, that, you know, I could put them on the same shelf, and it's not a big deal. I also got in the mail this, which I was really excited about. This is World's, Batman Superman World's Finest Volume 2 Strange Visitor, which continues on with the Mark Wade series, uh, the series written by Mark Wade. And I really like the first volume. This has which issues? This has issues 6 through 11. So I will probably be reading this this week. I'll be reading this this week. And one of the reasons I picked up Creepy to revisit it is because I got this in the mail. This is Creepy Volume 2. This is actually the paperback edition of Creepy Volume 2. It looks just as good as Creepy Volume 1. Uh, it's, like I said, this is, this is awesome stuff. It's awesome stuff. I love this comic. So, yeah. Creepy Volume 2. So I have this to read. So one thing that's going on this week is I'm actually leaving town for a while. So I pro my, my video output this coming week is going to be sporadic. I should have something up tomorrow. After that, I will be around where and when I'll be around. That's a mystery, so keep an eye out. But I am taking a trip. I am leaving the manor, but it should all be fine because I'm leaving Roger in charge. So everything will be fine. Roger's in charge. Everything's good. So hopefully there won't be too many corpses to clean up when I come back. You know, I'll have to... You know, are you going to clean up after yourself this time? But you know where the mop is. <sighs> we'll see. Anyway... So I'm taking a trip, and I'm actually going to be on a plane for a long time. A couple of planes. I'll be, a, I'll be on a plane, like, all day. I'll be flying all day. And so I'm actually going to be taking this, my teensy-weensy little Kindle. Taking my teensy-weensy little Kindle on my trip with me. And so I've been thinking about what I'm going to read next. I probably will be done with Conan by the time... I take my trip. I do have this. This is what I have to read for Roger's Cheap Old Book Club next month. This is M.R. James' Collected Ghost Stories. I do have this. I do have a Kindle version of this. So maybe this is what I'll read on the plane. I'm not sure. But I'm also going to... I'm a little behind on my Occult Detective magazine. 
I still haven't read num issue number nine and issue number 10 just came out. So I'm probably going to download issues nine and 10 onto my Kindle. And I probably will read them this week because we're moving closer to occult December, excuse me, occult detective. We're moving closer to occult detective October. And you know, what's better to read going into occult detective October than occult detective magazine? Nothing, nothing. This is actually a perfect thing to read during October. Also though, hanging out on my Kindle for the longest time has been a bunch of novels that I got a while ago, a bunch of Perry Mason novels. You may remember Perry Mason from that television show he was on where every episode Perry Mason would stumble across a dead body and then he would have to defend somebody that was accused of murder. It was a formula that seemed to work. But I've never read one of the Perry Mason novels by uh, Earl Stanley Gardner. But I have like 50 of them. Literally, I've got 50 of them on my Kindle. And this is the first one. This is The Case of the Velvet Claws. And since I have all of them, I'm thinking, I might read this this week, The Case of the Velvet Claws. I seldom run into anybody who's actually read these. So I never hear anything about the Perry Mason mysteries. But I'm probably going to be reading this one at least this week. Probably. Probably. So I have some possibilities. I have some possibilities. You know, when you're stuck on a plane for hours and hours and hours, you've got nothing else to do other than read. Which is, you know, I'm not complaining about that. So yeah, I'll be taking this little guy on my trip and reading some stuff. And... I will see you when I see you uh, next week. It's, it'll be, you know, I'll let you know what's going on as soon as I get to where I'm going and start doing what I'm doing. So yeah, there you go. And in the meantime, Roger will be minding the mansion. Right, Roger? Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.